For those of you that have watched the channel for a while, you recognize what's behind me. For those of you that are new and don't know, it is a Certiflat plasma cutting table and under it, under a bunch of crap, is my Everlast plasma cutter. This video is going to kick off a build series involving those two pieces. My hope is to add parts to that to turn it into a CNC plasma table. Uh, we're not going over the top with this. This is a DIY custom built deal. We're going to we're going to give it a good college try. We're we're going to try to d keep the cost down, keep the simplicity pretty easy because this is my first plasma table. I have no idea how to run one. But my freehand plasma cutting yeah, yeah, not so good. Um and the idea of having to cut out templates that then use to make multiples of a part uh, it just seems redundant. So we're going to skip all that and we are going to try to make our own CNC plasma table. So as much DIY as we can, just like with any of my other videos, I'm going to sh show you guys everything. So if I screw something up, if I burn something up, if I end up burning my house down, You'll see it. Fingers crossed. Insurance premiums paid. Uh, let's let me show you what I've got so far, and uh, that's that's where we'll start. So the base of this table, like I said, is going to be our sort of flat plasma table. Uh, it's two by four, I believe, cutting surface, and we're going to have our X and our Y. And the Z axis is going to be manual. So it's going to be a set it and let it run. We're not going to have a servo motor or anything like that to move the Z axis up and down. And for those of you wondering, the Z axis is actually the torch height. So we'll set that based on the material that we're going to use. We'll lock in place and it's going to run. No fancy auto torch height control, none of that. Like I said, real basic and budget friendly. Now to get our X and Y axis, what I've opted to do was get a kit where you get plasma cut parts that you weld together to make your carriages. Those carriages run on rails. In this case, the rails are going to be two by two box section. And if you can see that that is our pinion it's like a rack and pinion system we have our stepper motors which we need to get some gears to match that rail section and the carriers will ride on there stepper motors attached to the carriers the gears on the stepper motors are going to interface with that rail section with the gear teeth cut in it and that's going to give us our X and our Y axis so two by two box tubing, not that big of a deal. I went a little heavy on the wall because I don't want any flex or any shaking. And then a set of DIY carriages. Um, the carriages come like this, just raw steel, plasma cut, cleaned up with a grinder a little bit. Uh, of course, I'm gonna clean these up a little bit more. And with the bearings that you need and the hardware to assemble. Uh, if you do your part uh, and follow the instructions and weld everything together, this is what you get. So that's our carriage. And our stepper motor will bolt there and Replace that with that gear I was talking about that we with the rail. And the rail will get welded directly to our 2x2 two two box tubing. So with this setup, I have three of these carriages that I need to weld up and put together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to bore you guys with that. It's real simple, just three parts. They line up. 
you weld them together, make sure everything's nice and true and square, and you install your bearings. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and I'll bring you back once I have all that done. Got the carriers tigged up through a coat of paint on them real quick and installed the bearings and stepper motors, not torqued down or anything, just put them together. And what I've done is I've clamped my two by two box tubing to the weld table, just so you can kind of get a better feel for how this is gonna work. So let me show you that. What I need to do is get this two by two section here. I'm gonna make a plate that bolts to these two carriers and it'll ride on that. That'll give us this axis, the front and the back. And then the torch will actually get mounted to this carrier and that'll be that axis left to right. So now that we've got our carriers figured out and we've got the rails that the carriers are gonna ride on and we know we're running these steppers, what we need to do now is facilitate some sort of motion. So right now there's nothing connected to the steppers, so there's no way, even if these were controlled and powered, there's no way they would move. The output on the stepper would just rotate. It doesn't connect anything. So the system we're going to go with is actually a rack and pinion style system. So there will be um, rectangle stock with the gear teeth cut out in it, and then there will be gears on the steppers that interface with that. And that rail section will actually be welded directly to the two by two. And they'll mesh. And then as the stepper turns, the carriage will move. I think I'm saying this right. The tooth pitch that I was recommended is a 20 pitch. So I went ahead and bought my lengths of the rack the, the railing with the teeth cut into it. And that's when I ran to our first hurdle. The smallest shaft diameter 22 gears that I could find were half inch. Well, half inch drive diameter gear, not on this quarter inch output. Um, so I had to get a little creative and I could not find anything that would adapt this. Uh, I don't know why. I, I would have thought this was more of a common situation. So hit up McMaster car and of course I'm going to link everything down in the description. And found these. It's a quarter inch drive coupler. And it has two set screws. So that will set here. Cool thing is the OD on that quarter inch to quarter inch adapter is half inch. And it fits nice and snug in that gear. So what I would like to do, take the adapter, I'll probably remove one set screw, and then we will TIG weld the gear to the adapter and then that will go on our stepper motor and should give us a nice solid connection to that gear rack. Now the next hurdle that I have to figure out how do I get the box tubing mounted to our sort of flat plasma table. What I'm thinking is some sort of arm that will bolt to the front and kind of out and up and have like a socket for that two by two tubing to sit in. And I kind of want to build some sort of adjustment into it so that I can true everything up. Uh, so I got to figure that out and 
I'll probably have to call on the talents of Mr. Steve over at Mayhem Metalworks to help me out. Um, until I can get past that, we're kind of at a stopping point right now. That's it for this one. This is part one of the, what will we call this? The CNC Plasma table build? Sir flat plasma table CNC conversion? Something along those lines. Uh, but that's it for part one. Until next time, get up, get out there, and do it.